call to order. This is a special meeting of the Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. The challenges of change are always hard. It is important that we begin to unpack those challenges that confront this nation and realize that we each have a role that requires us to change and become more responsible for shaping our own future. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Boren. Here. Bauk. Excused. Bowers. Here. Decker. Excused. Hammond. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Versi. Here. And Wongaman. Here. 14 present. We have a quorum. Alderperson Koth will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One, One nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you, Julie. Okay, we have two matters laid over, which are both connected with the budget, 1532 and 1533. 32, Resolution 129, 1011, as amended by Alder Persons Hammond, Balk, Boren, Rinfleisch, and Raisler, ordering the 2011 budget appropriations and the 2010 tax levy for use during the calendar year 2011. And we have uh, 1533, resolution number 130-10-11, as amended by Alder Persons Hammond, Balk, Boren, Rinfleisch, and Raisler, ordering the 2011 budget appropriations for the city of Sheboygan funds. We would want to do Excuse me. 130 first. Mayor, I put my light on right away. Yes. We okay. I'd like to uh, make a motion uh, to move the vote to November 29th for final uh, passage of the budget. Second. And under discussion, we've got two gentlemen that aren't here that there's been changes to this budget, amendments made that they, I have not heard from either one of them or had uh, I know in the case of uh, Alderman Decker he worked quite hard to get this budget to where it is and I'd like to see him have an opportunity to vote on it whether he thinks it's all right or not um, it's and not same with, same with Corey okay we have a motion and a second under discussion I would not advise moving the meeting to the 29th myself uh, number one we have all the aldermen assembled here this evening that are available uh, it is not customary for the city if there is a quorum to move meetings around uh, for uh, for the uh, convenience of older persons. Um, also on the 29th, our budget is due in to the uh, state or to the county by the 1st in order to get the tax bills out. Moving it to the 29th, if there's no resolutions reached on the 29th, uh, then the earliest we could have the meeting is the 1st, which would put us out to the 2nd. That is the reason why we scheduled this meeting tonight. It would be up to the vote of the council. We have a motion and a second, but I would strongly discourage it. It is under discussion. Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Monday, I probably will not be able to attend the meeting. So we're gonna have a problem of, do we hold the meeting for two other, other persons? And then I may not be able to be here or whoever else may be here. So I recommend that we take the vote today. Uh, we've had numerous discussions. Uh, the public has had two opportunities to speak on there. I think we're pretty sound on where the public stands. I uh, urge us to take the vote today. Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. Alderman Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would at least hope that if we go ahead with the vote tonight that Alderman Decker and Alderman uh, uh, Balk are given the opportunity to speak. Uh, it might be water over the dam depending on how this goes tonight, but uh, as Alderman Heideman said, Alderman Decker put a lot of work in on this budget and I certainly would like to hear if he has any comments on it and also uh, uh, Alderman Balk. So I, w I hope that courtesy is extended to them if they ask to be heard. If they ask to be heard at the next council meeting, they, are, they, they will have a, an opportunity to voice their opinion on the decision of the council. Is there any further discussion? We have a motion and a second to hold the meeting till the 29th. I would like a roll call on this, please. Sure. Um, Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? No. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? No. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. And Wangaman? No. 
Um, four ayes, ten noes. Motion fails. Uh, we will take, Sue, did you say 30? Uh, one, 130. Mm -hmm. We will take resolution 130-10-11 first. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage as amended under discussion. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first off, I just wanted to thank the uh, police, the DPW, and the library for doing what they were told to do this year by coming in originally with a 0% increase to their budgets. Uh, second, I want to thank the DPW, um, also the union, for being the only ones willing to um, help the city out with conceding the raises, um, and which helped, obviously, very much to put this budget together. Very disappointed with our other union partners uh, not stepping up to help us out kind of in a time of need that the city needs. And then as far as raising taxes goes, we know there should have been enough um, concessions from all the unions to um, save all the guys, keep the library funded as well. And um, if, they wanted a, if they want a lasting relationship with the city and the municipality, they're really going to need to try a little bit harder to support the system that pays them. That's kind of a key, key part to their, <laughs> their wages. Uh, the taxpayers across the nation have really spoken. They're fed up with government overspending and thinking they have an open checkbook with tax dollars. Uh, the real world has ways they have to work within a budget. I think uh, and I believe local government should also work within that same tightened budget. Um, I know raising taxes is inevitable, okay? Um, but now is not the time, no matter how small it is, because it's principle now. It comes to the point on, I put this in quotes before I had this, let's just keep raising taxes to support our spending habits. It's, it's without regards to the taxpayer as well. I just want everyone to know that's why I'm voting no to the budget tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, one thing that should be noted is that while the state and the federal government have continually uh, spent more money year after year, the city of Sheboygan has held the line on its tax levy for the last five years. Uh, in that time period, the state has raised uh, the expenditures at the state level an average of 5.1 percent every year or 25 and a half percent in that five and a half years that the city has been operating off the off the same amount of money just to note that alder person montemayor thank you mr mayor i would like to make an amendment is now the right time or shall i wait for the next document an amendment to the general fund budget that's right uh now could be a time to make an amendment yes that is what you're talking no, about no Next one. Thank you. Oh, it's not the general fund budget you're interested in? Well, I want to take some money from the motor vehicle fund to fully fund MOE. I just want to say that's, it. That's the, the next right, one. Next one. I will do it then. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Alderman Raisler. I just want to uh, elaborate and comment on uh, Alderman Versies and thank him for thanking everyone. But I think uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, Mr. Molio, I think the uh, fire department also uh, helped out with their raises going back into insurance as well, correct? Yes, I am correct on that. So I want to make sure that they got their due. Thank you as well. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Alderman Bourne, once again, please. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> uh, I'm not going to support the budget tonight either. And uh, I gave some reasons the other night. Uh, number one, we're, we're carrying over a million dollars into next year's budget. Uh, without knowing how the union contracts are going to shake out, what our health insurance is going to be for 12, and what uh, the Wisconsin Retirement Fund contributions are going to be. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, for police and fire, they're going up to as high as 19.4% of their salary for 2011 contributions. And for the citizens out there that don't know it, uh, somebody in the uh, in the fire department that makes or the police department that makes a hundred thousand dollars You the taxpayers we the taxpayers are going to have to fund an extra nineteen thousand four hundred dollars into the Wisconsin retirement fund They continue to pay nothing If any of you happen to subscribe to the Milwaukee Journal or read it at JS online the article in the paper yesterday, and I want to just cover a little bit of it uh, that the budget situation in Madison is even worse than what it was anticipated to be. Already reeling from a projected deficit in next year's budget starting in July, the state faces an even more immediate challenge. Rising costs in several programs that could set up a shortfall for the current year ending in June's budget, uh, budget document show. 
That possible shortfall was not included in budget estimates, estimates released Friday that could easily top $100 million without action from either Governor Jim Doyle or Governor-elect Scott Walker. Any immediate shortfall would be in addition to up to the $3.3 billion deficit already projected for the 2011-2013 budget. Plus, it could trigger a legal requirement for a budget repair bill early in the Walker administration, a major potential distraction to the incoming Republican governor who must already deal with high unemployment in the next two-year budget. A report released Friday by the Doyle administration showed that the projected budget for 11 and 13 could be as high as $3.3 million. This amounts to up to 11% of the overall $29.23 billion uh, being requested by state agencies in the two-year budget. To put this another way, the, fort, the shortfall would be enough to pay for the state's share of running the University of Wisconsin system and Wisconsin Technical Colleges for two years and still have money to spare. In addition, the state is under court order to pay back a fund, <clears throat> a fund to compensate injured patients uh, for an illegal budget transfer of $200 million. Uh, the state Supreme Court has ruled that this was an illegal transfer and the $200 million, $200 million is going to have to be paid back in the next two years with interest. In some years when the state expenses rise more than expected, higher than expected tax collections help, help offset those costs. But the Doyle administration report released Friday showed that tax revenues this year will come up $140 million below estimates. Uh, so this cements my reason for not voting for this budget tonight because uh, very likely Governor Walker is going to have to make a budget uh, repair bill and likely, in all likelihood, very likely, that could uh, be a cut in shared revenue for the city of Sheboygan and other municipalities in the 2011 budget. So, Mayor, the other night you talked about uh, a mid-year surprise. It may, it may come before a mid-year surprise. It may be at the end of the first quarter. And I, in good conscience, conscience cannot vote for a budget that carries forth a million-dollar deficit with all the uncertainty, uncertainties that uh, we're faced with going into this, this next year. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Um, just one uh, clarification. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, dollar amount for, sh for shared revenue in 2011, I believe, is already set. Director Ramodio. Yeah, well, that, that number is already set. If the state was to give us a surprise, they'd have to send us a bill for something. They would. Which is what they did they a will. couple of years ago. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm also not going to support this budget. Um, and I'm not against funding the library or the fine work that Alderman Hammond did and the, and the concessions that were given by our public employees. What I have a problem with is 80% of this budget contains wages and benefits for employees. This is wages and benefits for employees that, that our taxpayers that are losing their jobs, having difficult times, having to take cuts in their own wages and, and, and providing more of their benefits uh, have to take uh, <clears throat> part in that. So I'm not going to support this budget. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do believe that the wages and um, benefits are less than that. I remember our um, finance chair last year was very happy that we were able to bring that percentage down to between 75% and 78%. And I remember that clearly because I thought that was a giant step that we made in one year, unexpected, because he originally thought we could get it from 84 maybe down to 82, but then it was all the way down to either 75 or 78%. I think we did a good job last year. Um, and we can think of all sorts of for instances and what ifs and maybes, but we have to act on what actually is right now. So I will support tonight's budget. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. 
Uh, being in the service business as we are, uh, of course, the majority of our expenditures are going to be on wages and benefits. We don't manufacture a product that we'd be paying for raw materials or anything of that sort. Alderperson Rinflesh, Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just for clarification, we are talking just on 1533, correct? On Res 130. Mm -hmm. So we are just talking about the general fund right now. We're not talking about the tax levy. Right. And the tax, about the, the tax levy, <clears throat> which would be... ordering the 2011 uh, appropriations. Right. Appropriations from the general fund. Uh, the library issue, as we've been brought up, that's going to be the next document as we talk about the tax levy. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. The big one. Um, 80%, uh, as we heard about, uh, salary and benefits. Uh, as I look at the budget as amended, um, this keeps uh, this basically the, the police at the same uh, level. Uh, it allows for us to have the three patrol officers funded by the COPS grant. Um, and I, for one, am going to support this because I cannot see what's going to happen to the city uh, if we don't have those officers on the street. Um, we had heard uh, earlier about um, divisions of the city that are, are, are uh, luxuries. This is not a luxury. This is a must-have. Um, Votes against the budget, that's fine, but understand you're voting and, and, and not having those cops on the street according to the amended budget. They will be layoffs, we will, we will lose those three uh, officers. The other way of looking at it is simple too. If we uh, vote against the budget, don't have those police officers on the street, have a smaller budget, we still have to be paying 80% salary and benefits. <coughs> that number isn't gonna change at all. We'll just have less cops on the street. And I, in good conscience, can't, can't do that as well. So um, I support paying you know, the 80%. Do I wish that in contract negotiations down the road that they'll pay more for the retirement? Absolutely. Um, that's not gonna happen tonight. That's not gonna happen Monday night. It's gonna, um, we have to decide tonight if, if we're going to fund according to the amended resolution or not. <clears throat> so I, for one, at this point, will, for 1533, support the budget and urge that you all do, uh, so at least we can keep the safety of the, of the city uh, first and foremost. Thank you. Sue? Thank you, Vice President Rinflesh. Alderman Heideman. Uh, thank you, Kenny Mayor. Uh, uh, Alderman Montemayor, I did check with uh, uh, Director Mario on that number. Um, some time ago when we had the star resolution, I can remember uh, Alderman Gisha uh, commenting to me about after that, we got it down to like 78 or 76 percent. And he said, I know, Joe, you'd like to have it a lot lower than that. And Mayor, I, I called some companies that were in the service industry, and they said, if, you're, if your wages and benefits are 80 percent of your budget, I'd get out of the service industry if I was you. So. <clears throat> well, let's tell the police department that. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mayor. Just to follow up on a uh, thing that actually you and I discussed in the past, and Alderman Boren brought it up tonight. If we get hit with those mid mid year surprises, how do you resurrect that? Because we can't lay off any firefighters. So you come to heads, it goes to DPW heads and police department heads. If we get hit with those surprises, there isn't anybody else we can hit, correct? How else, will we, uh, how else will we? Okay, are you asking me the question? Statement, sure, it is in question. Where would it come from? Uh, one thing you're speaking in hypothetically, ifs. Pretty big if. Okay. Pretty big uh, certainty. Well, I mean, we, if you're going to turn down this entire budget for a what if, okay. right? Uh, do you go into business saying, what if I fail? There's always what ifs, but the job needs to be done. Alderman Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want my friends from the library to uh, remember that I was the one the other night that mo moved to fully fund the library, but uh, under the circumstances, uh, I, uh, I can't vote for this. I just simply can't vote for this budget for the reasons that I stated before. <laughs> And also, Mayor, uh, that's a hypothetical that I'm, also, I'm almost certain that you're, going to have to, that you're going to have to deal with. And the only people we can lay off, the only people we can lay off are cops and DPW people because we're frozen. And you did not follow the advice of your former finance director when he sent Alderman Balk and I an email the morning he started, the 6.30 in the morning of the day that he started working for the county and said, don't hire the four firefighters because we're going to have to lay them off at the beginning of the year. So now we're in this fix because of the way you broke the tie in hiring the four people. That's right, Alderman Boren. I broke the tie because the council wasn't able to reach a decision. Remember that. 
Well, you made the decision that is tying our hands right now with this budget because we can't lay off any firefighters. The council is elected to make decisions. The council was unable to make a decision after, I believe, seven or eight votes on that issue. So I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I, I'm getting the feel. I know that there's confusion on what we're just talking about. We're crossing over on things. If it's all right with the council, in past years we've always had one of the heads or depart de deputies come up here and they're working with you so that they can explain. I'd feel much better if you had either Nancy or Jim or both up here. Would that be all right with you? Mm -hmm. Because then you're going to know which one you're, you know, you're talking about. Perhaps I'm hearing that you're talking the wrong one at the wrong, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just a little concerned that maybe when we get to the vote. But if we had Nancy or Jim or both up here, that would be helpful for you. I think Is that all right? Both, absolutely, they can both come up. We don't need, they can, I would like them to be here. We could just move a couple chairs up here and just have them up here so they can be part of this. I feel much better about that. So then can they clarify, we are yes. just voting on the- we, we need to have the clarification from them so that they, from that they can explain exactly what you're voting on. Okay. okay. Document 15-33, as amended, is what we're voting, is, is what we're Right, voting. and that's resolution number 130, as amended. Mm -hmm. And that one does not have anything to do with the tax levy. It's for the enterprise funds, the internal service funds, and the trust funds. So that document has nothing to do with the levy. one to do and we had we made Nancy could you clarify if the 130 deals with the library please res 130 no no res 130 doesn't not, right it's the Wait, if you water. turn to the second page you'll see the funds that it lists it's um wastewater parking transit um, Motor vehicle, water, health insurance, um, liability insurance, the trust funds. It has nothing to do with the levy, the library, anything like that. Or anything else. So, so Mayor, may I? <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Then we did make the motion, I made the motion to put the resolution upon its passage, and we did have a second for that. So that's, that's what we're discussing. This is what is under discussion, just the... <laughs> Just the uh, budget appropriations for the city of Sheboygan funds. And the, the amendments to remind you what you did on Monday. This, Correct. This is what the spreadsheet was that was handed out. Yep. Finance then took that and incorporated in this, which transferred $125,000 from motor vehicle to the general fund. Correct. And they included the water utility budget. Um, that's what happened on this one document. So that's this one. Okay. Okay. So that is the only change on this That's on this the only document. change on this document. Is that a little clearer? Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn off all the lights here. If anybody would like to discuss just this document. Alderman Hammond. Um, I, do, I do believe if um, Alderman Montemayor, if you were looking to make your motion for the motor vehicle fund, this would be the time to do it, correct? Alderperson Montemayor, please. <laughs> thank you, Alderman Hammond, and th thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to take the remaining amount from the Motor Vehicle Fund to fully fund the MOE for the library for 2011. And the amount would be $159,500. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to take $159,500 out of the Motor Vehicle Fund and to appropriate that to the library to meet maintenance of effort on the library funding, the library budget. Under discussion? Thank you. These are tough economic times and so we need unusual actions as we can see. We can see we're working feverishly trying to understand, trying to do this job and I think uh, the library funding of MOE is very important. We heard from about 50 people, about 120 people filled this chamber and the hallways, and even Alderman Boren said that at ringing the bells today, six, six people recognized him and said, keep the library going. 
And um, I know you've heard that we have that the library, the we, well, I am a trustee of the library, have the four hundred thousand dollars there. But a lot of that money has been saved little by little and will probably be used to replace the heating cooling system, the 30-year-old heating cooling system. Have you ever been in the library in the summer? It is icy cold because there is only on and off. And now there's been repairs on that. There is nothing, there's no other way to maintain that. Imagine what would happen if that system does fail. Millions of dollars worth <coughs> of books with mold would be destroyed. We must save this money. The request for this has been in the capital improvements for many years. It's always been slashed. So the library has been saving money little by little, knowing that probably it will have to come from that fund. And I consider this a one time only in these extremely unusual times. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Person Montemayor. Alderman Hammond. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, although I understand the intent, um, I can't support taking money from the motor additional dollars from the motor vehicle fund. Um, you know, this got us in trouble in Madison. It's gotten us trouble in Washington. The $125,000 allocation from the motor vehicle fund was to cover the administrative costs that the city currently does, or pay, or cover the administrative efforts that the city currently does on behalf of the motor vehicle fund. So it's not a, a money grab to balance the budget. It's just basically looking at the cost the city incurs for running that or helping or, or assisting in that fund and charging it back to the appropriate department. You know, when we made the allocation of the levy increase of 140,500, that allows the library board, again, the library board has to make that decision, but allows them to make the right decision to keep the hours of service by employing 40 hours a week and allows them to buy new books and new items. And by the, again, the director's own admission in 2011, we would not be kicked out of Eastern Shores library system. So the funding that we provided them at the last meeting should be adequate enough to maintain a level of service that they're currently doing right now. And funding additional dollars just to meet maintenance of effort doesn't seem to make sense to me when we're already meeting the service level that they're currently at. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Vice President Rindfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is tricky since we're looking at moving from one of the enterprise funds to the library fund. Um, Technically, the library isn't really the issue right now, so I'll just uh, focus my remarks on the motor vehicle fund, and then we'll carry over to the next item uh, as we get to it. Um, I think in the past, we have used the motor vehicle fund as a uh, savings feature uh, to take money out to balance budgets and so on uh, in, the, in the last several years. Um, and it's a nice large line item, and it looks like it's something easy that we can take and, and, and balance the budget easily. Um, but it's an internal service fund, and it's there for a reason. It is there for when police officers need to buy new vehicles, we have cash to pay for that instead of borrowing for that. It saves the taxpayers money. When the fire department needs new trucks, that's the fund it comes out of. When vehicles in public works need to be replaced, that's the fund it comes out of. We're gonna need some vehicles in public works shortly. And uh, by tapping into that fund, um, means that we'll now have to go borrow uh, basically capital funds um, or bonding for vehicles, which I think is an incredibly poor choice because those vehicles don't last as long as, your, as the payback on, on when you borrow for that. Um, so we have cash, taxpayers have cash on hand to buy vehicles, uh, and instead of using that cash on hand, you're asking them to borrow it in the, in the long run. So while it seems easy that we can just transfer that, that money out there cheaply, there's actually hidden costs in that, and the costs are that we'll have to borrow later on uh, and, charge in, and be charged interest. The other side of that vehicle fund is, is that as departments take out of that fund uh, for vehicle purchases for themselves, they also pay back into that fund within their budgets as well. Uh, and I can definitely not in good conscience transfer money out of there for a non-vehicle purchase without some kind of payback feature that the other departments are subject to. Um, uh, it, it, seems, it seems like it, it, you know, well thought out of as, as a good idea to try to maintain maintenance of effort, but a, a poor decision financially to be done out of, uh, out of an enterprise fund and the uh, general, levy, uh, general tax. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, okay, I appreciate the uh, the, the gesture from uh, Marilyn uh, Alderman Montemayor with that, but I I have to disagree with that and, and completely go away from that because it's not necessarily a one-time situation because we're already going into the motor vehicle fund 
with something <clears throat> else. So it appears that it has become easier and easier and easier. Once you crack that open, one year, then you go into it another year, and you go into it another year. You're not fixing the underlying problem, which is ultimately cities just not bringing in the revenue. We have a history from Mr. Amodio that he brought over a few nights ago with revenues are less than expenditures. Revenues are less than expenditures. Revenues are less than expenditures. There was a number of, four, number of years that that happened. There's, I think, a lesson hopefully to be learned with that. Expenditures are greater than the income. That tells me we need to decrease the expenditures. And that doesn't always necessarily mean letting people go. There's a lot of other ways to find money. And that's not always finding the money through the taxpayer's pocket book either. Uh, so I cannot support, again, tapping into the motor vehicle fund again this time, because what happens again next year? We talk about the what ifs, but this isn't going to be fixed next year either if we keep going into different funds and pulling money around. That money is needed somewhere else, and I'm sure it's probably, there'll be a time when it will be needed and it won't be there. Um, going back to the initial resolution 1533, right? The, the, the one that we are working on right now. Right, right now we're working on the strictly the, okay. the, the, we're not working on that one, Alderman Sampson, yeah. No, no, no I mean, I mean we're, we're, we're still talking about the general fund. We're not talking no, about the- No, actually right now we're only discussing the enterprise funds. Uh, we're, we are discussing the motor vehicle fund right now because Alderperson Montemayor made a motion okay. to move some of that money over I, to the okay. library. Thank you, then I think this still applies. I, this is a fine example of developing some sort of a longer term plan, focusing more on the future, because when you get crunched for time, you make very drastic decisions that are very costly in the future. It may work today, but tomorrow you're gonna pay big time, and, and we're finding that out right now, what really running a no solid plan and foundation is doing. We're making decisions, uh, and, and it's gonna be very hurtful in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Uh, one thing I will point out in the year 2010, which is the present budget we're under, our revenue and our expenditures, our expenditures are not uh, anticipated to exceed our revenue. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to make that clear, because that was the budget that I passed last year, or you passed last year, that we're operating under now. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, you brought up a good point, uh, Mr. Mayor, here. What, we, we're setting a budget. What happens if we go over that budget at the end of the year? I, I know a budget's only an estimate, but if we're over the budget, uh, are there any ramifications? Could someone answer that? Because in other years, we've gone over budgets in certain departments. Are there ramifications? The ramifications are you're digging into your reserve funds in order to float the boat. Okay, so there's... <clears throat> There's no, uh, uh, no Nobody, way Nobody's going the, to jail over it, if that's no, what you Well, yeah. uh, I understand that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, if we do go over the budget, there's no, the ramifications are not that something we just take it out of reserve funds, so that's all there is. We, we don't go back to that department and say, look, last year you went over. We don't take that money out for the next year. Is there any checks and balances on the uh, well, I, I, can I can tell you that this year we, we built a budget uh, for 2010 yes. where we're not going over our budget. And, and we're anticipating that this budget that we're passing in 2011, uh, we have uh, financial people here um, that uh, we are not going to exceed our budget in 2011 also. Well, I can't, we so. I can't speak of what prior years, but I'm saying in 2010, we are not projected to that our expenditures will exceed our revenues, and this budget in 2011 is designed to do the same. So everything is based on projections, and if you do go over, we just make it up with put put more money in. So we try to estimate what our revenues are and our expenditures. If you go over, we just take it out of a fund, right? Um, well, the the idea is to keep fiscal restraint where you don't go over. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the. Uh, All right. Well, I'll get back to the uh, amendment that we have for for the maintenance of effort. If I understand this correctly, we're not going to lose any maintenance of effort this year if we do not approve this amendment. Is that correct? We're not going to lose membership. In the I believe Shores. that's been stated. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So 
this is a time that we can stand up to the state because the state mandates that we do these things, but they do not provide us with the funds. So we are taking a stand right now in saying the state of Wisconsin, and we've, I've talked to some of our representatives, and I believe other people have too, and there's something in Madison that might be changing this. So I cannot support that because I think that uh, <clears throat> other cities and other communities would be doing the same thing that we are or should be doing. Now, I'd want to commend the people from the library. You should be sending those 1,400 signatures to your state representatives. Put the pressure on them like you put it on us, which is good, because they're the people that really call the shots, not us. We're called to provide the money. They make the laws. So right now is a chance for you people to make inroads and change this law. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Alderman Bourne, please. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Alderperson Montemayor, one more time. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Remember, maintenance of effort was um, started, initiated a long time ago on purpose so that a community with a library, municipalities with libraries, if, if they had a, a, a mayor or a council that didn't see value in a library, they couldn't wipe it out in a couple of years. It purposely put maintenance of effort in there so that municipalities would maintain libraries. That was it, because can you imagine, if we didn't have maintenance of effort, what the libraries might be like, or what if, what if they might be like in this state with the tight budgets? Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and the people who made the law about MOE, there was a good purpose to that. They were thinking about the long-range future, not just today. And so I'm still urging you to take $160,000 out of the motor vehicle fund. Just one out. Thank you again, Alderperson Mount Mayor. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and again, if times were different, I would have a different opinion. Uh, maintenance of effort was put in in, a, in the 70s, um, and this is one person's opinion, but in my opinion, maintenance of effort was very poorly written. It put no contingencies in for municipalities when they have financial or, econo or uh, when economies are struggling, things like that. Um, what we're doing is not going to wipe out the need public library. It will give them the, the, the funds, again, as the library board sees fit to put the, uh, keep people at 40 hours. It gives them money, again, as the library board sees fit to buy new items um, and buy new books. Um, we're not wiping them out. Um, we're not maintaining maintenance of effort. We're not getting kicked out of Eastern Shores. Um, I just, I'd have a hard time supporting pulling $160,000 out for, um, just so we can meet an arbitrary number. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. I am out of lights on the board right now. Uh, we have a motion and a second to appropriate $159,500 from the motor vehicle fund to the library in the 2011 budget. Um, an I vote will be to uh, appropriate that money from the motor vehicle fund to the library. A no vote will be to not do it. Roll call, please. Bowers? No. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Heideman? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? No. Versi? No. Wangaman? No. And Boren? No. <clears throat> Two ayes, 12 noes. Motion fails. We're back to the original amended document, uh, which uh, is for the, the various funds in the city. Uh, the, only, the only amendment being that uh, Transfer $125,000 from the motor vehicle fund to the general fund for administration of the motor vehicle fund. Other than that, it is as documented. Under discussion on that, Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to clarify for the vote, since uh, I agree with Sue that we have kind of crossed the lines and had multiple debates on this one, uh, the vote today is simply page two and page three of the document, the 1533, resolution 13010. Dash 11, which is the enterprise funds, internal service funds, trusted agency funds. 
Uh, all other discussion that we would like to have would come in the next document uh, in terms of you know, the final budget and what have you. Uh, and then also to, to clarify the, um, the 125,000 from the Motor Vehicle Fund uh, isn't actually a transfer out of existing cash. It is simply that we are not putting in this, this year's budget to fund 125,000 for um, Motor Vehicle Fund administration costs. Is that correct? That we're actually not, rem that, that the 125,000 isn't coming out of the current balance. What it is is that we're not funding it out of 2010 budget. Well, it is, com it is coming out of the, the fund balance. balance. It is coming out of the balance. Yes, okay. it's, a, it's an additional expense to the motor vehicle fund. Which is the clarification I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> so that's really the change that we're looking at on this document here. We're not talking about police or, or library or anything else, things that I had already talked about myself. So if just to clarify if, that vote. If we were doing it the other way, we wouldn't have had to pull money out. We would just reduce the rents that were paid to. So this is a little more transparent. Okay, is there any further discussion? I have no more lights on the board. This will be on document number 1533, uh, resolution 130-10-11. A yes vote and aye vote will be to pass as amended. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Nope. Ka? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bowers? No. Nine eyes, five nose. Motion carries. Okay, now we will discuss resolution number 129-10-11, which is basically the general fund budget. Um, do we have a motion? Yes. Vice President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, make a motion to put the resolution 129-10-11 as amended upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Attorney McLean, uh, is it possible to, when we're doing this next document, to vote on the library issue separately, take a separate vote on that, or do we have to take this as a full package? Um, I guess it'd be my opinion, Alderman Boren, that you'd have to take it as a whole. This is the budget document okay. for, the, for the city. Uh, if, I could vote, if I could vote on the library issue uh, separately as I did the other night, I would support raising the tax levy for that. However, uh, I can't support it because of the fact uh, is, is in other groups, other legislatures, you know, unfortunately, when in my mind I can't support, let's say, 90 or 80 or 90 percent of the budget, I can't vote for something that's in there that 10 percent of the budget that I would support. So I want my friends from the library to know that if I could vote on this separately tonight, I would support raising the tax levy for the funding, the compromise that we reached the other night, but because I can't vote on it separately and I have to vote on the entire package, I'm gonna vote no on the entire package. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, I realize it's not a perfect budget. Um, you know, I know there's those out here that don't think the unions did enough some that think um, the concerns about the level of wages and benefits that are out there. Um, but holding up the budget or voting no because of some ideal that we can put pressure on the unions or put pressure on somebody to give back wage and concessions in a non-contract year is, in my opinion, not productive. Um, I think we've got um, a good document. It keeps the police, the police on the streets, adds an extra three actually, keeps the firefighters um, working, keeps DPW doing what they do, provides a level of, of, reven or level of revenue for the library. Um, and again, next year is a contract year and we can come back and fight then. So again, I would encourage the aldermen to, although we all have our, our personal opinions, to not hold up the business of the budget in the city because of, of some, personal, um, some personal feelings, I guess. So, so thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond, and I think that's a good point to make uh, uh, for those aldermen that are thinking that we should have gotten more in contract uh, negotiations. Contracts were not opened. This is not a contract year. 
2012 is a contract year which will be negotiated during 2011. We, we, we came to um, agreements with all of our, our labor unions uh, in the summer of 2009 for the 2010 and 2011 budgets. So this is not a contract year. So trying to hold out on the budget or change the budget to try to renegotiate contracts uh, is not, uh, I don't feel as productive at this time either. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I'm sorry, can I just get some clarification exactly? Now, we just voted for 1533, resolution 1530, or I'm sorry, 130-10-11, and that was for amending everything. That was strictly for the funds. Which was that? The various enterprise funds. That was for things like wastewater. We have oh, that was the general new. fund and library, and then we also have some enterprise funds like oh, wastewater. So now, now we're voting on the general fund. Correct. Yes, yes. This is the general okay, fund okay. we're discussing not, right now. Not the library. The library is part of this. Now the library. So, so now that separate issue that we went through with the library funding mm -hmm. is now part of the this. library. That that the, what we voted on the other night is now rolled into the one document. Correct, Steve. Mm -hmm. And Alderman Sampson, what we were talking about with Alderman Montemayor's was because it was coming out of the Motor Vehicle Fund, right. which is part of this enterprise fund of the last resolution that we just passed. Okay, okay, no, I understand that. So right now we're voting on the, the, the chart that he... That, the that entire budget, correct. Plus yes. then the library is attached. Mm -hmm. issue with that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Alderman Wangaman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> I would just take a moment or two to uh, strongly concur with Alderman Bourne. I too have been fond of the library for a very, very long time and uh, I uh, don't feel comfortable uh, supporting this document with that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. Any further discussion? Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Oh. Um. This, the sheet here at Mead Public Library, we're looking at uh, 12 cents as far as the tax rates. No, so if we voted on this, that would be a tax rate. compromise was oh, six cents. No, but where's six that drafting? Where's six. Where's yeah, the, uh, what was uh, amended the other evening, you have that document there, was uh, number, 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 four. Four. number four on the list. Six, with a six cent increase. Four on the list, but number six is starred. That's just my notes from the meeting. That's not, no, yeah, we started doing all the amendments. Oh yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion, Alderman Sampson? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a feeling it was, it was coming down to everything was going to be wrapped into one. I have to sort of sway in, 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 in the direction of Alderman Bourne, but not for the same reasons particularly. I, I have an issue with even if it's a slight raise in, in any taxes, uh, I still have an issue with that uh, when the council was set, set the mandate and set the standard for no tax levy increase of any kind. It was pretty solid. Um, I, th I think there are a lot of other ways that, a, a lot of other things that could have happened uh, that would have prevented maybe a slight tax increase of any kind. But again, uh, I, I think when people are looking at long term, Yes, the library is important, and yes, police and fire and everybody, everybody, they look at those issues, but they also look at what a city does for its long-term planning. And if, if, if their solution, and they see the solution as well, when we find ourselves in a spending hole, let's raise the taxes. Six cents here, 10 cents here, 12 cents here, 24 cents, let's just raise taxes on everybody and, and just get it over with. Um, that's, you know, again, I, I have a terrible challenge with, uh, with that, and I, and, I, and I wish that the library issue was separate from that, unfortunately it's not, but I like the, the way that we handled the, the general fund and, and the library issue. Unfortunately, these are gonna be combined as one, so I, I, I'm not too sure I can support because of my issue with the tax increase. Um, just so I can clarify something, I believe Alderman Boren said that he would support the library, funding of the library, but would not support the other document, correct? Mm -hmm. So he didn't, okay. You're not agreeing. I think he's the opposite oh, of where okay. you're I'm standing sorry. right now. I said, I said if we could separate out the library from, in this document, this document, you know, there's, there's 
you know, so you want to quantify the library as 15% of the whole budget that I agree with, if I could vote on it separately, I would vote for the library, the compromise that we voted on the other night. But in totality, I can't support the budget. Okay. Um, let me uh, clarify something here. Um, this budget can be amended. For those of you that, that can't support this budget, it's 8 o'clock right now. Um, sun comes up about 6 in the morning. We can amend this thing at any time. Uh, if you're not comfortable with something, toss out an amendment. Uh, if, you, if you have one portion of the budget that you're not satisfied with that's causing you to vote against the whole thing, um, the intention is to pass a budget this evening. So if you are opposed to this budget, please come up with a plan and give us some suggestions. You know, it's easy to be opposed to something, but what's the answer? So, floor's wide open, push your button, come up with a plan that works for you, if this budget isn't working for you right now. Um, but I have no intention of leaving this place until we pass a budget this evening. Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I uh, agree uh, and ho hopefully rise to the challenge. Um, for some comments on the amendment, the budget is voted as amended um, and right now, and that is based off of adding in the tax levy for the library. And uh, what we've heard uh, two gentlemen, all the members, uh, said they're not going to support the budget, even though that's the budget they voted to amend to. That seems a little unusual for me to, to vote for the amendment budget two days ago and then to not vote for it today. Um, and I understand that, there, that there, there's confusion that they couldn't separate that item, um, but uh, um, I think perhaps it's, it's, it's a way of taking, taking um, ducking the issue, I guess, a little bit is to say, I supported one, it, two days ago, but I'm not going to support it tonight because of the full budget. That's the budget that was amended with their votes, uh, with not, not, however, with my vote. Uh, the reason I didn't vote for the amendment is because <coughs> this council has made a statement that we were not going to raise taxes and we, and we were uh, going to try to make government more efficient and work within our means. Uh, we did that for all other departments, except for one. Uh, and for as, a, as a statement for, for myself, what I had said was that uh, if for the police department, we're going to expect them to work within the, uh, the same budget, uh, all departments should. If we're going to raise a tax levy for one department, then it opens the door that we should be able to raise a tax levy for all and fully fund the police department, fully fund public works, uh, because make no mistake, um, what happened in public works is we're going to be four people down from the current year when all, everything is said and done. Um, the unions have come back, but that really is a layoff. I mean, while well, it's not directly walking people out the door, that's what's happening. We're going to have to do the same amount of work with four people less in public works. Um, so I'll go back to my original statement of saying if we're going to raise the levy, let's raise the levy enough to fully fund uh, at least those two departments, public works and, and uh, uh, the police department. Um, or if we're not, then don't vote for the amendment, which was already voted upon, and all departments live within the current budget means. Uh, so I will make the amendments, since I'm guessing, based on my math, that it's not going to pass with the two gentlemen that had already spoken, uh, to uh, remove uh, the uh, tax levy increase as was amended uh, two days ago. Um, and if that uh, amendment passes, then we can at least pass that budget, and then we can ask people to add it back in again if they so desire. Uh, but perhaps then, uh, because that's a budget document that I can vote for then, uh, and at least see if, see if we can get nine people to vote for that. But uh, as is, I can't support it because we're raising the tax levy for one department and not for all of the departments. Thank you. Uh, I guess I'll make that a formal motion. amendment then? <laughs> I'll make that Second. motion. Repeat that again. Could you repeat Aaron. it? Um, the, the amendment would be to... The amendment to would be to... Um, remove the tax levy. Remove the tax levy increase. And now there is, let, let's, let's get this straight, there is a tax levy increase in the general fund budget. Yeah, the tax the, rate remains the same. Correct. Let's, uh, the, so not increasing the tax, the tax rate, rate that equates with the six cents per thousand dollar. Basically reverse the action that was taken on Monday. So we have a motion to reverse the uh, tax levy, tax rate increase, excuse me, that was passed on Monday. We have a motion. Do we have a second on second. that? Who did the second? Well, the person Vanderweel seconded that. Okay, right now we will limit the discussion to strictly this amendment. Anybody speaking on this amendment? Alderman Hammond, no? Sure. <laughs> Please. I, I, I saw you turned off your light. I didn't oh, know. oh, I'm sorry. I meant to turn it on. We're I didn't know it was still blinking. Before. Yeah, I know. I, call I me blinking you know, from you now on. can only let people talk so much. I have to ignore you occasionally. Yes, so. instead yeah, of, uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I lost my train of thought, which, isn't a, which is a pretty short train tonight anyways, but uh, I appreciate what Alderman Renflush is doing, his, his intent. Um, I can't support that. You know, when we put together the budget on Monday night and we've been working on it over the last uh, couple months, what we were trying to do is, is look at the core services that we need to fund. Um, and keeping the police officers on the street, everybody's familiar with the fire, fire department issue, um, keeping as many DPW people as possible, and then, again, giving the library enough cash to be able to do the things they need to do, um, and not one penny more at this point. Um, and that's what this budget does. Yes, does it unfairly say to one department you get um, 140000 of levy, and you guys were not raising the levy to, to do it? Absolutely. But unfortunately, you know, everything is not always equitable. Um, so I wouldn't be in a position to support that. I think the budget we've laid out is a, is a good one, um, and um, I would not support that. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Sampson? Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, just for clarification, with Alderman Rimfleisch's proposal, we are keeping the amended budget the way Alderman Hammond... Um, basically, so Alder Alderman Rimfleisch's uh, amendment is to... Go back um, to this. Just that only taking the, the yes. tax rate increase off. Correct. And, and the sense. purpose for the that library, tax library rate increase was for the discussion about the library. Correct. Right? Yeah. It takes off the 140, 140,500 increase in levy to go to the library. Okay, so we're taking the six cents off right now with this amendment. The library does not close down completely. If we did not vote to fund the full $300,000, it stays open. They have to make a few cuts and, and, and reposition hours. It's not completely closed down. Am, am I to understand that, that? That is our understanding, correct. Okay, okay. so we're removing the six cents from that. We're going back for the original amendment for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Alderman Reisler? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess the, the one problem I have with the whole thing of yeah. Alderman, uh, Alderman Reinflisch is that um, we could very easily have taken where the, any of the ones that we added in and said library and taken the tax increase to fund that. So it could have been for the police, it could have been for the fire. We're making the tax rate increase to fund the whole budget. So to say, to put all the onus on the library and say it's only for the library I think is unfair. I think we're doing it, they're still taking a $150,000 hit um, and reducing uh, some of the services they have because of the, the furlough days. Um, again, I, I think it's unfair to do that. I think you could take any one of these out and say it's for the police, it's for the fire. Um, not necessarily for the library. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Vice President Rinflesh. Uh Thank you. Um, to clarify um, that um, the, the comments all around are, are excellent and I agree with, with most of them. Uh, I think the budget, uh, um, as amended last time on Monday, provides a, a working budget and you know, it's probably a good one. Um, it's one I can't support because I can't support a tax levy increase if we're not increasing for all the other departments. Uh, but the point of my amendment is because we have to pass a budget this evening, and the budget passed as amended with nine votes. Two of those votes have already indicated they're not supporting the budget. That doesn't pass the budget. Uh, so my attempt is with this, with this is to go back to the original um, uh, amendment uh, as brought forth by Alderman Hammond uh, to the Committee of the Whole and then voted on first at uh, the first meeting um, on Monday uh, because that's something I can support. Uh, so again, my attempt isn't to say which is better, which is not, which department, which is not. <coughs> my attempt is to get a budget that passes this evening. Um, and uh, I understand that the, the, uh, the two older person that voted against it will probably still vote against it, but it's a budget that I can vote for. And as the mayor had said, that if you know, we need to pass a budget this evening, and uh, I'm willing to stick my neck out there and say this is a budget that I can switch from my no vote to a yes vote with, uh, to perhaps counteract those that are going to vote against it now. Uh, and it's, it's, it's respectful comment, it's respectful motion, uh, because people have the reasons for voting yes or voting no. It's just that this is one option that we can to pass a budget. It's one that I can support. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinflesh. And, and like I said before, if people are not, uh, uh, cannot vote for this budget as is, any suggestions that you have, any amendments you would like to make to get a budget that is more to your liking, please bring them forward. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just, just to clarify, Alderman Rinfleisch, I was also one of those folks who could not support the tax rate increase, so I'm not changing my vote from that, uh, from my last vote. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. 
Okay, I have no more lights. Uh, this will be a vote on Alderman Rindfleisch's amendment, which states that. Um, the amendment to remove the tax levy increase that, let's see here. I'll actually read what you did on Monday night. Um, to amend to use funding option four, which is on Alderman Raisler's sheet, along with tax levy increase of six cents per thousand or equivalent of six dollars per one hundred thousand dollar home was passed on call of the roll. So we are reversing that. In, an I vote would be to reverse that library thing. amendment that was made the other evening. Alderman Bourne. So this is only this is only on the amendment. This is only on the amendment about the library. So in other words, if we vote, uh, if we vote yes on this, if you vote, we're, we're if you vote yes on this, it would remove the option brought forth by Alderman Raisler. Okay, I got it. To raise the tax levy to fund the library, fund basically the library. Is, is what it would do. So if we vote yes, what we did the other night for the library goes away. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? No. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bowers? No. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Excuse me? No. And Heidemann? No. Five eyes, nine no's. Motion fails. We are back to the original amended budget. Now we've had several aldermen say that they do not, uh, will not vote for this budget. I would like you to bring forth any ideas, uh, any amendments that you may have to get a budget here this evening that you can vote for. It's easy to say no, but uh, it's hard to come up with solutions that you can say yes to. So please, ring on in, give me some ideas. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I feel like a yo-yo all of a sudden. Um, I guess I'd just like to make a, a comment, um, and I appreciate Alderman Sampson's um, concern about raising the tax levy. And I would completely agree with you um, if it was a situation where we'd been doing this year after year after year after year after year. But we haven't. Um, for the last five years, um, is my understanding, we haven't raised uh, the levy at all. And the truth of it is, at some point, cost of services do go up, regardless of whether you're in a service or a manufacturing business. Um, and yes, this is a tax increase, but I think at least from what I'm hearing talking with constituents and also the um, emails I've been getting from, from uh, um, throughout the city, um, people don't have a horrible, horrible problem with this one. Um, they think it's a responsible and reasonable tax increase. Um, and I think, again, if we had been doing this year over year over year, I completely agree with you. But once in five years, um, uh, you know, I think it, be it's a responsible. Okay, once in six years. I think it's a responsible tax increase. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As much as I would like to agree with that, I still don't believe that this is the time at all to do that, not to keep throwing the wrench in there. And I just don't think this is the right time to start doing that because, again, what happens next year, what happens the year after, yes, they're all what ifs, but you're not fixing the problem, which ultimately comes down to spending. Um, if we just bump taxes a little bit here and there, where does it stop? Who's going to stop that train from rolling, to be honest with you? Um, we got to do it at some point. We have to take some accountability for it. I'm not against the library. I'm not against funding all these folks. I just I was hopeful that there, there were some other ways with the inner workings of all the departments to maybe find other areas of, in, uh, of, of money to cut back, not necessarily from people, service side of things, the employees, but I was hope, hoping that there were other areas within the budget that could be cut for other, other, other things. That and that fine. is Alderman Sampson, that's how we basically came up with this budget, was finding a lot of those cuts in various there, departments. There was which no is way to find an initial 300,000 to satisfy <clears throat> folks in the library. So it, was, it was pretty drastic from the 1.7 down to what we ended up with in, in a very short period of time. It just seemed as we were throwing around tax levy increase, tax levy increase, and all of a sudden we went from a $1.7 million deficit to something far, far less with, with a lot of numbers crunching and, and moving some things around without a 
tax rate increase. So if there was a possibility of maybe going a little bit farther with an additional $300,000 in other areas to save I would, this problem. Can I, may I please? Please, Alderman Hammond, jump right in. When you take, you know, as we were putting this together, when, as you take from something, it's a zero, you know, you've got to, if you give to something, you've got to take from something. So if you look at what we've done, we didn't fund a city development director, um, you know, four people out of the, out of the public works. Um, so if we take 300,000 from somewhere, pick that somewhere, which is usually probably going to involve people, um, it's got to you know, give it to somebody, it's got to come from somewhere. Um, and in my opinion, um, and I've looked through this thing probably at nauseum, um, again, there's probably places, yes, we could cut six jobs or three jobs out or four jobs more out of DPW and give it to the library, but now we, now don't, we don't have four DPW workers. Again, it's, it's got to come from somewhere. Yeah. This, this budget has four less DPW workers than it had uh, in 2010. Um, you know, and for, for the record, uh, um, DPW uh, has almost 50% less employees or half the employees they had back in the mid-80s. So it's not like uh, the city has always been exorbitantly spending money. Uh, I think we've been trying to be fiscally responsible around here year after year after year. Um, eventually, you get to the point where you're in the service business and you cannot provide services. It's not like the city has been, it has been fiscally irresponsible over the last five years when we have not moved the tax levy. So. Um, I'm just saying right now to, to vote against a what I think is a logical budget um, for the sake of trying to get more union concessions when it's not a bargaining year or um, I, you know I think at this point like I said if people have other suggestions something that uh, myself or Director Amodi or <coughs> Alderman Hammond didn't notice going through this entire budget and believe me I didn't just work on this thing for an hour or two it's been a a long process. Um, please come up with those suggestions. Alderman Percy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there is one service the city does have that um, actually does self-fund itself and has the opportunity to do so, which is the ambulance fund. Um, question for Alderman Hammond or Director Modio on where that original money comes from to fund the ambulance fund. Is it not taken out of general fund monies to begin with? And then if so, if you do not take it out of the general fund, and you take back the $359,000 that it contributes to the general fund, you still have a gain of over $200,000 to you if they self-fund themselves for one year. They're making more revenues. We have a new billing service that's going to bring in more revenue, so they're going to clear what they have here, so they have the opportunity, which is our only city service that could potentially self-fund itself for our year. And if it's that much better, it could continue to do so. But that's where there's $200,000 that can go back to other uses, which would be the library, DPW, and anybody else. But with this budget here, all we're looking at is the library funding. Well, you would have that $200,000 if you would work on that fund alone, which is self-funding itself. The, the money from the ambulance fund, uh, the, the revenue generated by the ambulance goes back into the general fund. I understand that. That's only $359,000 out of $881,000. Where does the money come with come from to begin with? Jim. Talking about the seed money? Where does where does their money come from to where does it originate from? Why don't they fund it by the what they they pay back. What? No, it's not. Could you could you repeat the question? The original line item that you have here, you have your three hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars which is contributed back to the general fund. Okay, you take that off the eight eighty one, you still have five hundred thousand dollars sitting there. Where does that five hundred thousand dollars come from? Comes from the comes from the revenue that's collected. <clears throat> There's eight hundred and something thousand dollars of revenue <clears throat> that's collected in the ambulance fund. Okay. Five hundred thousand pays the expenses. Three hundred thousand is transferred to the general fund as the transfer into the general fund that supports other costs and expenses in the fund to balance it. So no money is taken from anywhere to begin with to fund this budget. That's correct. So that they're they're paying as earned. <clears throat> As they're making the money, they're paying their, their own budget. Well, they've got some cash on hand, which they use to fund themselves. Okay. Just like every other special revenue fund does. Okay. 
Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderperson Kath. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Let's go ahead. Um, I would like to uh, make a motion to amend Resolution 129-10-11. Um, I would be okay with the tax rate increase to 12 cents per 1,000, with six cents to the original Mead Public Library, number four, and the other six cents towards a full-time city administrator. Okay. Julie, Julie, you want to repeat that again, please? To increase the tax rate to 12 cents per 1,000, six cents towards the original plan, Mead Public Library, and six cents in the tax rate for a full-time city administrator. Well, that's a, a great idea. We must remember that uh, the council just voted to file a document that came out of salary and grievances to fund a city administrator, but... Do we have a second on that? Do we have a second? Second for discussion. We have a second. Um, now I am going to. Okay, where where are we at here? We we're working on the original document. This is the first amendment uh, to raise the tax rate by twelve cents to fund a city administrator and the library. Uh, on that subject only. I'm going to turn off all the lights. And Alderman Rinfleisch, you wanted to speak on that? Yes, sir. Oh, Your Honor, thank you. Um, it's no surprise I wholeheartedly support hiring a city administrator in the city. Um, I think, though, based on my current, my previous comments, that I'm not willing to raise the taxes for one department and uh, and not for all those that need to be funded. Uh, I'll actually uh, vote against uh, that uh, the tax levy increase um, for that purpose. Um, I thank Alderman Koth for looking at creative ways of uh, perhaps having this position that may help us in the long run with the budget problems we're having, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's not an appropriate time at this point in time when we're looking at funding uh, other items in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rindfleisch. Is there any more discussion on this issue? There is none. Roll call vote, please. An I vote will raise the tax levy to 12 cents, six or raise the tax rate an additional 12 cents, six cents going to the library, six cents going to the city administrator. Alderman Bowers, did you want to? Discuss that. I think you just explained what it was, and, and this is to increase the tax levy. Correct. 12 cents. Our city administrator and, and library. library. Six cents for the library, six cents for the city administrator. It's an amendment to the budget document. So that's to increase? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? No. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? No. Jersey? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bowers? No. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. And Cott? Aye. Motion fails. One eyes. One eye, 13 no's. Okay, getting back to we're still on the original budget document. I don't believe we have any amendments pending right now, correct? Correct. So we're discussing the original budget document. Alderman Bowers, please. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to call your attention to <clears throat> billing inspection. Uh, this is, uh, I, I believe, the expenditure is only 467659 Now, I've worked with the billing inspection department. We increased these uh, uh, rates last year, and I think, I, I don't have it in front of me in the budget, but I recall we estimate revenues of 503000 this, I think, is a little low. I think we can easily approach uh, somewhere between 550 and 600,000. Since the budget is uh, predicated on estimates, uh, I, I think we very easily could up the, the estimate for revenues to uh, between 550 and 600,000 because of the increase in uh, various uh, building inspections and construction and electrical permits and things like that. So uh, if, if it's possible, I would like to amend the <clears throat> revenue and the building inspection to uh, 600000 because we're basing everything on an estimate anyway, right? Like in fines paid, collected? Yeah, that's, that, that could be a, uh, a guesstimate. I'd like Director Amodio to speak on that. 
Um, building inspection is one department right now um, that is being close because we made uh, huge cuts in building inspection as far as personnel. We also raised some of our fees that is being close to a self-supportive department as far as fees e equaling, as far as revenue equaling expenditures, but I would like to speak, have Director Amodio speak as far as revenues. Could we get a second to just open it up now? Second. We have a motion to raise potential revenue in building inspection or estimated revenue to six hundred thousand dollars. Is there a second? Where are we? I don't have. To. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. What are we? What are we projecting for revenue now? I don't have my. That's budget. what I'm asking, uh, Director okay. Modio. Right All right. Now. Well, how much of an increase would it be? It's on this thing right here, 15-32, second page. Uh, building inspection, um, is it 427,000? Okay. For revenue, last year we had budgeted 396,870. Uh, we looked long and hard at this and uh, with the way the economy is, we, we've seen decreases in permitting and new, new home construction. Um, so we felt that this was more in line uh, rather than taking an aggressive approach. Um, we took an aggressive approach in 2010, uh, especially in light of the economy with uh, interest income. Um, and uh, we're significantly below that this year. Also with uh, the intent to sell a lot of the city property, land and buildings that we own, and to date we sold very little. Uh, so I think this is a realist, a more realistic picture than assuming that we're going to have a better economy next year. Okay. Uh, I checked with building inspection is October 1st. We had already collected $503,000. One, one thing I think we need to note, uh, building inspection fees went up, I think, May 1st of this year. Yes, April 1st. April 1st. April 1st. Uh, we did have a big flood of applications before the fees all went up. I and know that we, for a fact. We are ahead of last year's, uh, what we collected last year, and we're only looking at eight months of increased fees this year. Uh, uh, I've got, when I handed these out, uh, I've got the actual expenditures uh, for, or, I'm sorry, the actual <coughs> revenue through. 10 months for building inspection, and it's $359,790.62. What was submitted to me was 503000 so I mean, my I'd figures. Have, I'd have to see where you got okay. the information from. Right. Alderman Bowers. All right. Uh, that was what was given to me by Tracy. It's a little too late now to come up with if you say there are only 300 and some thousand, I say 503,000, it's too late to amend it because you're saying they're, they're below last year's. Well, we're at 359,000 against the $396,000 budget okay. and I'd through say 10 months. 503. <clears throat> well, it's too late. Okay, do you withdraw that? Amendment. Well, I have to withdraw because I, I don't have anything to back it up as of right now. Very good. Alderman Raisler. We are Thank still you, working Mayor. on the original document now. We yes. have no I, amendments. I guess I'd just like to point out, I think everyone's aware of it, the county raised the, uh, the tax 2.6 some percent. We all know LTC. We know the school system raised it. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's only about the six cents is less than a percent. <coughs> on, 20, on 21 million. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously it's, it's less than, way less than that. We're less, less than everyone else. Um, I know we're the last ones um, to, to do this, and I don't think that it's fair to say the city shouldn't raise their tax rate a little bit based on the fact that, again, we happen to be the last one um, getting our budget done. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I got a question for Mr. Amorio. Uh, if we would have gotten a concession from the police union on a salary freeze for next year, what would that have amounted to and also for the fire department? 
I believe the fire department gave it for next year, and it was $100,000, Alderman um, Bourne, and it would probably be close to the same for the police department. That would have been, that would have been the, uh, if they would have agreed to a pay freeze, it would have been 100000 per department? The fire department gave $100,000 for 2011. That was part of the August of this year's agreement. So they gave their wages back to medical benefits for 2011. The fire department did. The police department didn't give anything back for 2011. If they were to, they're roughly the same salary size um, as uh, the fire department, so it would be between 100 and 110 grand for a, uh, a wage freeze. It was my understanding, if I could continue. Please do. <clears throat> uh, I'm, the un I'm of the understanding uh, from some reliable sources that the, uh, uh, the, police, the police officers union was willing to do a uh, pay freeze for 2011. However, they were not allowed to vote on it. I'm not privy to those negotiations, but uh, I'm just wondering whether it would be uh, whether it would be feasible to approach them again, and possibly the fire department, maybe for some additional uh, some additional uh, uh, concessions for 2011. I realize we're at the 11th hour, but uh, in our, I don't think our HR director is here tonight, so I can't ask him. Uh, I guess, Mayor, I'd have to ask you, do you think it's a totally dead issue, or do you think it would, well, we with, should uh, approach, uh, approach the unions again well, and with, put this uh, off with, until Monday? With uh, the <coughs> Thanksgiving coming here in another uh, three hours and 40 minutes, or four hours and 40 minutes. I don't know who does math around here. Three, three, four. Um, and with Friday being a, a, a holiday, a city, a, a, a non, the city hall is closed on Friday. We're all the way to Monday. Uh, the budget is due to the county Wednesday morning. Um, I don't think we're going to get negotiations open, solved, signed in a budget before then. So I would say at this point, uh, it is a dead issue. Let me say we did uh, sit down with the um, police department uh, union representatives and um, it is uh, uh, not a contract year. It's very hard to get concessions also um, when we are uh, basically playing it out in the media the way that it was it was done um, if you have certain uh, people in the city that are are uh, trying to trying to negotiate in the media you're not going to get anywhere and so they they uh, basically said they didn't want to open their contracts at this point so that's that's where it's at and it's it's not going to be solved uh, between now and uh, and next Wednesday morning Alderman Brinflesh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, furthermore, uh, if I were a member of those unions or departments, uh, I would not be willing to, uh, as much as it pains me to say, give up anything, especially considering the conversations about taking money from one department and giving it to the library. Um, and I, I think it's, it's unreasonable to, uh, to, to, uh, of an expectation to think that they're going to open that up willingly um, to do so, um, unless, again, all departments are affected. Um, then I think they be, might be willing to do so. But it's clearly shown that, that this body doesn't seem to want to affect every department the same. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinflesh. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman, Alderman, if we vote yes only on the perfect budget in our own mind, we will never, ever, ever have a budget. We've worked hard, we've made concessions, <clears throat> we've made adjustments, we, it isn't the perfect budget as far as I'm concerned, or any of you. But if we only vote on a perfect budget, we'll never have a budget ever in the history of the city. So I urge you to, yes, vote on this budget that has been manipulated and maneuvered and massaged to get everything as much as we can for most of the people. I urge you to go ahead and do that. Our job is to do the best for the most. If we want to do perfect, it won't happen. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. I think you made a very good point there. It's all about compromise. Um, this is, uh, you know, we are to the point here. 
Uh, and I, I think I have no lights lit here. I think we should take a vote on this budget. If it passes, it passes. If it fails, I think we're going to take about a five minute break and we're going to start over again. Yeah. Um, so I would like to uh, call for a roll call vote and I vote will pass the budget um, as amended yeah. as is in the documents. Okay. Roll call, please. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. No. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bowers? No. Hammond? Aye. Okay, motion fails. I'm going to call for a five minute. Oh, oh. I, just wait. It's seven, seven to seven. We don't have nine. No. nine. It has to be, nine. A, yeah, it has to be a majority nine of the council. Um, I can't break any ties on this one. I, I'm calling for a five minute recess. I urge everybody to uh, um, put some thought into the process. If you're not satisfied with this budget, um, I'm looking for suggestions here. I, th I thought it was a pretty good budget the other night. Obviously, people <coughs> have changed their minds. Alderperson Montemayor, before we recess, please. Thank you, and I do think we need the recess. Please, the no votes, please reconsider. Please reconsider for the good of the citizens, for the good of the council, for the good of Sheboygan. Please reconsider. Or if you, if you can't reconsider and can't live with this budget, uh, please come up with some constructive suggestions. Uh, we will uh, break for, f let's make it 10 minutes. We will reconvene at uh, 25 to 9. Okay, folks, if we can all uh, take our seats. Okay, we are back to the original document. Um, any uh, suggestions are more than welcome. I have. No, we're back to the original amended document. Well, yeah. We're back to nothing, we're back, we're back but to we're nothing. about to solve that. We're back to nothing. Right. So, so what? Alderman Rinfleisch. Oh, uh, <coughs> I make a motion to reconsider the previous vote. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to reconsider the previous vote, vote on the amended it? document. I did. Alderperson Koth seconded it. Uh, and just for a uh, question from Attorney McLean, uh, the document obviously is 7-7. Uh, nothing happened there. Is it's a proper to make the motion this time to reconsider? Yes. Okay. Um, my motion to reconsider, uh, my, my thoughts on uh, fairness hasn't changed uh, for the departments. Uh, my thoughts uh, where I stand on funding departments versus other departments, uh, you know, the whole books versus cops hasn't changed. Uh, however, we do need to get a budget done, and I think it's the best that we can accomplish at this point in time. Uh, so I'm willing to uh, switch my vote. Um, for the betterment that we can move forward to the city. And as uh, you, Mr. Mayor, has stated previously in other meetings that we're going to be sitting down as, as the um, strategic, strategic fiscal, fiscal planning, planning committee, committee December right 1st, away. which is next Wednesday. And I think we can avoid uh, some of these issues that I have right now in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was thinking about the, the comments that some folks had about raising taxes and opening the floodgates and being concerned about that. Uh, and we look back in the last five years and we've, we've held the line on the tax rate, but I think really we've cut taxes. And I think what people forget is we eliminated the wheel tax and we eliminated the stormwater tax. That was so, about $1.8 million so between 1 .8 those million two. So $1.8 million in taxes we repealed. And, and turn that back. So it's, it's better than just keeping things the same the last five years. We've actually uh, reduced taxes. And I don't think any of the other taxing entities in the county can say that, um, that they've moved back the way we have. So I just, 
I hope people understand that we have been frugal. Uh, and this is a relatively small increase taken over the last five years. It's, it's very small, uh, but it gets us to a working budget. And as, as Alderperson Montemore put it out, nobody's going to love every part of any budget. Um, we just have to learn to w live within it, uh, work hard on the strategic fiscal planning committee so that we, we can make some changes going forward, um, incorporate the ideas that uh, Alderman Bourne has with regard to when the contracts are open and we can get down to good faith bargaining. Um, and, and he's absolutely right. We don't know what the landscape's going to be like in Madison. We have to make a decision almost in a vacuum with what we do know tonight. So I urge you to support the, support the budget. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. President Kittleson. Oh, yes. And I, I fine words from uh, Alderman Hanna. I, we, as he said, the, the wheel tax is gone. The stormwater fee is gone. Those were things that really helped to uh, mend the holes in our budget. So I, I, too, I would encourage Alderman, please rethink your position on this and vote for this budget. And know that I'm, I'm pleased that our Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee will meet next week and we'll get going on uh, uh, planning for the future here. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, President Kittleson. Alderperson Koth. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. A uh, very good discussion. Um, I'm going to be changing my vote. Um, as much as I'd like to see a, a full-time city administrator in the city of Sheboygan, um, I will be voting on this budget. Thank you, Alderperson Koth. Alderman Sampson? Nothing? No, nothing. Okay, I'm out of lights up, up here. Um, we're going to take a vote to reconsider the last vote. Um, on the so the reconsider first and then we vote. <laughs> Correct. Roll call, please. A yes vote will be to pass the budget and no, no, no. 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 Yes vote just really just reconsiders. To, to reconsider. Okay, a vote to reconsider the vote. <laughs> yes. This will be a vote to reconsider. Okay. Mm -hmm. A yes vote will be to reconsider the prior vote. Roll call, please. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bercy. Aye. Longman. Aye. Foreign. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. And Koth. Aye. 14 ayes. Okay, now we are back to the original document uh, as amended. We need a motion on this. Do we need a motion? We need a motion. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, make the motion to put the re res uh, document 15-32, resolution number 129-10-11, as amended upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the document resolution as amended upon its passage. Thank you, President Kittleson. Roll call, please. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? No. Warren? Aye. Bowers? No. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Ten eyes, four no's. Motion, motion carries. Thank you, everybody. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.